is applauded and praised nationally. And I really knew that it was praised here in Cleveland, but I didn't know that the whole world loves and honors Caramel. Hello? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Do you hear all right, sir? Two young white social workers, Russell and Rowena Jellef, founded the Neighborhood Association on East 38th Street in Cleveland, Ohio. It soon was known as the Playhouse Settlement, and later, Caramu House. It all started with an idea, and an ideal. During their college years, Russell and Rowena developed a deep interest in public service. After studying the Constitution, they concluded many of the country's citizens were being denied opportunities, especially minorities, and in particular, Negroes and women, and they were determined to do something about it. When they graduated from Oberlin College, they got married shortly thereafter, and then they went up to Chicago and met Jane Addams and the folks at the Hull House, who strengthened their belief that all people could work together under the guise of a settlement house. And their thought was all people should be able to survive through the use of their talents. But not everyone agreed. Residents of the Roaring Third were comprised of a very diverse group, including Australians, Italians, Russians, Jews, Blacks, and others. Many of these citizens were being denied a proper education, housing, jobs, recreational facilities, and cultural experiences. But the jealous believed, with the use of the arts as a vehicle, human barriers could be bridged and interracial understanding achieved. It took a certain type of person at that particular time for Negroes to even be willing to follow because of the prejudice and the discrimination that was so prevalent. But because the jealous were just real Americans. And uh, this was the reason that uh, uh, the Playhouse Settlement was able to last. Around the 1920s, a main activity for all the folk that came to Karamu was theater. And in 1922, was the first real production. It was a children's production of Cinderella. Their uh, institution was the first to do colorblind casting throughout the country, putting all races on stage. And one of their beliefs was that art was a way of healing the races. And that was way before the civil rights movement. And that's something I believe in as well, but I also believe it's a way of cultivating the human spirit. Because when you get people of all races in this space, Color don't exist. Karamu was, I guess, the mother of the arts uh, here in Cleveland and throughout the nation. That, that's where it started. The arts started with bringing people together. And I think the, that's been the common denominator, the arts. Karamu emerged not only as a place where one could expand his creative talents, but also as a community resource where people felt they belonged. New ventures including cooking, sewing, music, clay modeling, sketching, and dance were introduced to the program. Negroes who came from the farms in the South looking for better opportunities that the Playhouse Settlement addressed because that's the only ones that needed their services having an institution that was just serving the needs of the children after they were out of school, why that was an unheard of uh, contribution to the community at that particular time. But it was the evolution of the theater that helped increase a growing national and international footprint. The Dumas Dramatic Club was formed and later renamed the Gilpin Players after the noted black actor, Charles Gilpin. They introduced many manuscript plays, including six by legendary playwright, Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes actually taught artwork here, in addition to writing many of his early plays. I knew him because he went to high school with my older brother, and that's how I had known him, from him coming by the house and being uh, Edward's friend. 
they were both students at Central High School, graduated in the same class. Caribou actually puts on and has put on many years Black Nativity. which originally he called What a Happy Day, and he renamed it to Black Nativity. We've actually put on a production of that. Uh, I believe it's been over 20 years. With the focus now on the theater, many Karamu alums attained national prominence. Is my freshman year in the 101 acting book, that was a picture of Ron O'Neill, uh, who, who's a Karamu alum, a photo of him doing a scene from Othello. And all I knew him for was Superfly. Bill Cobbs, who was in Night at the Museum, uh, is an alumni. In Hogan's Heroes, Ivan Dixon. Ivan took advantage of everything that Karamu had to offer. Believe me, he would not have succeeded in directing. He would not have succeeded in acting. And he, well, anything connected with the theater entertainment industry if it had not been for Karamu. Nate Barnett, who was a late Karamu alum, he was the first black stage manager on Broadway. Robert Guillaume, Earl Billings, Beverly Todd, Vanessa Bell Calloway, Al Fan. On Everybody Hates Chris, the little sister Amani Hakeem grew up two streets away from Karamu. Actors, dancers, writers, and painters all found a place where they could practice their crafts. 